Hello and welcome to this video tutorial R for Excel users. In this new episode we'll be looking at data frames, one of the most powerful features in R. A data frame is a set of data in tabular format where each column is a variable and each row is an observation. Look at this simple table in Excel. We have three columns and five rows. The first row is the name of the column. The column name contains the name of some sales people. Column B, sales, contains the amount they have sold. Column C, area, contains the area where the sale was achieved. Let's now see how to enter this data frame in R. The easiest way is to create one vector per column and then merge them all in a data frame. Let's create the name column first. Let's now create the sales column. Note here that we are entering numbers, comma, zero. This will tell R that they are numerical. And finally, let's create the area column. As you can note, we have three vectors of four elements each. Let's now merge them into a data frame. The F, that's the name of our data frame variable, and we simply list the columns. And this is our data frame. It has three variables, three columns, and four rows, four observations. Look at its structure. You will note that the column name is of type factor with four levels. Column sales is of type numerical. Column area is also a factor with three levels. Factors are an extremely important concept in R and we will talk more about them later. Note that when creating the data frame, the columns name and area have been turned automatically into factors by R. We can also tell R to not turn them into factors and leave them as character strings by adding an argument to the data frame function. This argument is strings s factors equal false. The data frame still looks the same, but its structure is now different. You can now remove the variables name, sales, and area because we don't need them any longer. They're now embedded into the data frame df. Let's now see how to access the single columns within a data frame. You could use this syntax which accesses the name column or you can use a much simpler one. The syntax using the dollar sign is much easier to use. As an example, we want to calculate the total sales for all salespeople in all areas. We can write sum df dollar sales, and this will provide the total. Say that we want to calculate the average exactly as before. If we want to access a specific row in that frame, we can write the f square brackets 401. 402 and so on. It's also possible to assign names to rows in a data frame. The syntax is row.names, name of the data frame, the assignment operator, and then a vector with one name per row. Let's now look again at our data frame. And now the rows are not called any longer 1, 2, 3, 4, but A, B, C, D. We can use the row names to access the specific rows or combine them with column names to access specific elements. For example, is the element and column name row A, which is the first row, first column. Now see how to change the column names, which means the variable names. The syntax is names, df, sign an operator, and now a new vector with the new names. And now our columns, which means our variables, have all capital letter names. One characteristic of R we didn't look at in previous tutorials are special values. It's worth looking at them here. R knows four special values. The first one is NA, not a sign. NA, not a sign, can be used when the value of one variable in one column, for example, is not known. Say, for example, that we don't know in which area John placed his order. Then we can write and you see that this is a special value to R. The second special value is NAN, not a number. Not a number results from mathematical operations that have undefined result. For example, zero divided by zero is not a number because its result is undefined. The other two special values are positive infinite and negative infinite, and they result from similar mathematical operation. R knows how to deal with infinites, but you have to be aware that operations containing infinite will also bring to infinite result. For example, will anyway be infinite. Let's see what happens when we perform numerical operations on vectors containing NAs, not assigned values. For example, The result is also an A. Many R functions, however, have the possibility to ignore an A's. The argument to specify that is NA.RM equal true, which means remove an A's. In the case of sum, 
and now we have a specified result because we have removed an NA. This is it for this tutorial. I hope you find it useful. If so, please let me know by subscribing to my channel or leaving a comment below. Till next time, bye!